Hey, what's up, you amazing hackers? It's your favorite rodent Uncle Red here. How are you doing? I hope you're doing well today. So I've been asked a lot of times before, Uncle Red, what's your advice for getting into bug bounties? Like, I'm going to be very honest with you guys. I don't do bug bounties myself anymore. Why not? Because I don't have to. So what credentials do I have? I still teach people bug bounties in private sessions, one-on-one, -on -one, kind of like this in a Zoom call, where they ask me questions. They show me their screen and I basically tell them, go click this, go click that, go set this up in Burp Suite, etc. If you're interested in that, feel free to mail me info at thexcessorate.com. It's 80 bucks an hour. Uh, but like the main part about bug bounties, what a lot of people forget is that you're actually testing a live target that has been tested before quite often. So you're going to have to think of creative ways of hacking your target. That means that... For me, I was always focusing on things like broken access control, business logic, IDORs, things that are really hard to automate or even almost impossible. Because those automated things will have gotten out before, of course, that's logical. But what we really need to focus on is things that are really hard to automate. And even if you think about IDORs, broken access control, think further than what your eyes see. Think about uh, second order IDOR, multi order IDOR, where you're actually going to take, like, for example, a system. Let's say that you have a system where you can edit your products, but you cannot edit the product that somebody else made. But now you can import products as well. And in the import file, you see an identifier for a product. So you change the identifier to an identifier of somebody else's uh, product. And now you can suddenly change it. Bam, that's a second level, uh, second order either. So really important that you go and focus on finding those types of vulnerabilities, not just so much about all of the obvious things. I saw a great base, a post about based, great post about a friend of mine called Marcos uh, I Marcos underscore IAF on Twitter. I'll link his Twitter in uh, the description below, so you guys can go and follow him as well. But he so he said like I'm never hunting for SQL injections, I'm never hunting for OWAT, I'm never hunting for JWT. Say for me, if the JWT was vulnerable, do you really think it would be in bug bounties? It would have been found long ago. Now, on the other side, on the flip side of the coin, a whole long time ago, and that's why I can tell about this vulnerability because it's long been fixed, the manual said you cannot disable super admin users. I was able to disable super admin users, so I reported that and I got a bug bounty out of it. So you can have like really simple vulnerabilities, but you can also have much more complicated ones. And those much more complicated ones are usually going to be our crits, whereas you're going to have much more medium, low vulnerabilities. If you want to make like a sustainable income, you're going to have to more focus on those mediums at scale, you know, just finding a lot more on them. But the thing is, bug bounty is hard. You're going to have months where you don't find anything. You're going to have months where you feel like the king of the world. Now, the biggest problem with that is that your income is going to change as well, especially if you do bug bounties and you get like a reasonable amount of bugs. So make sure that your taxes are in order. That's all I want to say is report that income because you don't want the tax men coming after you. Uh, it really depends on, on country to country how these tax laws are set up, but do take that into account. Another thing is bug bounties. It's a live target to test on. It's not you hunting for bugs. It's you testing a live target. People keep forgetting that we are not really hunting for bugs. We are trying to secure our target. We're trying to check if it's secure. And your conclusion can be, oh, target secure, check. And then you move on to the next one. But the thing is, that can be either two things. Either you don't have the skill to hack that target at that specific time, because different bug bounty targets will require different skill levels. What do I mean by that? Business to business HR applications written in PHP with nothing obfuscated are going to be much easier than a bank that obfuscates everything. And it's going to be like a mobile app where you have to do certificate pinning bypass and root check bypass and stuff like that. So there's different skill levels to all of this as well. Try to take that into account when you pick a target. And I always say go for business to business applications. Why? Because they will contain more IDOR, broken access, business logic opportunities. If you go for things like newspapers, for example, newspapers aren't really that uh, comprehensive when it comes to functionality. Now you can do broad scope, but I, I definitely don't recommend doing broad scope in the beginning. 
If you really want to go hunt for bugs, start small. Why do I say this? Because broad scope just serves to find your target. You have two ways of hunting broad scope, DNS enumeration, finding your target, running tools on it, but also just identifying which target to hack. And then of course, you have that manual part after identifying the target. But that all comes back to the single targets as well. Now, the thing is, these single URL targets, these single domain targets, they're going to be much better for you when it comes to functionality. They'll usually be much more expansive. You'll have a lot more to hack on. But don't like, like if there's nothing to test, don't pick that target. If there's like a very, very small scope and you might test it, I, I, I know that it's really tempting to test really, really small scopes with almost no functionality in it because you might think, oh, I can uh, test a lot more on this because I can go a lot deeper. There's just not a lot more there. That's true, but everybody thinks that way. So in that case, what I always recommend is finding that functionality that's less tested. If you're testing for either broken access control, you might be retesting the same application 50 times over because you need to, if you test for either and broken access control, make like a permission matrix, what a specific user is and is not allowed to do. And then you need to test according to that matrix, which means often retesting, retesting, retesting. And don't be afraid to retest your target, even if you already tested it before. Don't be afraid to start from the top and go back to the bottom because you might have new insights by the time you have fully tested your target. You can always retest it. These are just some general tips that I had for you. If you guys like like to know more, feel free to leave me a comment because I don't know what you guys would like to see, but I think it's more on this bug bounty content and I'd be glad to help you with that wherever I can. But just so you know, I don't hunt myself anymore. I teach people how to hunt and usually they'll find like a bug uh, within like, let's say a few people will find a bug within like a few months of trying a few people will never find a bug a few people will find the bug within days it really depends like you don't have to beat yourself up if you don't find anything for a few months you can keep trying there's nothing stopping you but the thing is just that this is what bug bounties is is a combination of luck and skill and the thing is the more you expose yourself to the luck element because you can work on that skill yourself Exposure to luck is going to bring you that that lottery effect where if you play the lottery multiple times, the bug bounty lottery, you might win. You might have a better chance of winning. So if you increase that and your skill level at the same time, you see that you keep going up and that means spending more time doing it. Just don't stop learning. I know that you want to learn, but continuous learning is not that great. Just learn on your target while you're hacking. That's also a strategy that you can take. And then your next target, you might know a little bit more. Now, you can also, of course, while you want to learn something, for example, what I always do is, let's say that I encounter NoSQL. I've never seen NoSQL before. What do I do? I go and look up how to hack NoSQL. And if I cannot find much about it, I'll try to set up my own labs and hack my own labs because then at least I also have a little bit of visibility. If you have a target and you're really invested in it, set up a similar structure if you want to hack it. If they use Tomcat and they use like some kind of MySQL database in the back end, they have like a basic setup, like a basic setup like that. Make like a basic web server on it. So you at least have some kind of feedback as to what's going on. Now, of course, you cannot always estimate what kind of configurations they have set up. But if you can, the more information you have, the more information you have to reconstruct your own labs, the better. Because if you have insight in that back end, it's going to help you a lot. So... Just some general tips, make sure to set up your labs if you can, make sure to retest your target often, make sure to spend enough time doing and not too much time just learning because just learning gets you nowhere. The problem with learning is that all of these learning platforms, you know that they have a vulnerability, they don't have a lot of functionality, so you know exactly where to look and that's not real life. So don't spend too much time on those platforms. It's good to pick up the basics, but then move on. Next, don't go for broad scope bug bounty targets really really don't recommend it and pick a bug bounty target that fits your skill level what should you look for it really depends on the target but i always go for business logic broken access control idor those are the things that i will look for and then i'm a lazy hunter i have a passive way of hunting in every single input field single quote double quote back take a greater than sign and then i will put like a broken image like a less than image source equals x and then a greater than sign 
And I'll put that into every single input field that I see, because when I put it in my name now, if the application needs my name later on, I'm automatically testing it for cross-site scripting, SQL injection. And often, if I suspect there's templating involved, I'll, in, I'll put like a template injection in there as well. Try to condense as much in this video as possible. If you want to know more, feel free to let me know. Leave me a comment, leave me a like. That way I know that this video uh, is something that you guys are interested in. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye, amazing hackers.